All right, Scott. So uh, we're just going to go through, show you kind of what we do on pre-trips. Um, obviously, what I'm showing you is real basic. Right. Um, pre-trips a lot more in depth than, than what I'm actually going to show you, but I'm going to show you some of the basics of it. One thing I always look at is, is that truck safe enough to put my family in front of? That's, good that's, how, I, that. that's how I explain it in, in the classes that I teach. So, so when you say check the air pressure, do you actually use a I use an air gauge. gauge? Um, I okay. don't think a tire thumper can, it t doesn't tell you how much air pressure is yeah. in it. It'll tell you if there's air in it, but it doesn't tell you how much. And right. we, we, want, we want 100 pounds in our tires. I use an air gauge on every tire. Um, I, I check the depth of my tires, make sure that we're uh, within DOT compliance on that. I check my brakes, make sure it's in do within DOT compliance. Um, so I'm, I'm checking, it takes me about, you know, 40, 45 minutes to do a, a pre-trip every morning. If it's below 100, how long does it take to air up or how do you actually? Well, we have uh, air hoses on the trucks. I hook into my glad hands okay. and uh, it depends on how low it is. It can take up to about 15 minutes if wow. it's real low. If it's just a little low, a few minutes, a few right. to five minutes. Um, but I, I never, I won't roll without my tires at 100. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I do really thorough. I make sure that the truck is 100%. Um, I, I never want to hurt anybody on the road. So that's that's a big thing for me. So when you lifted the hood, is there a release or how does the, it? On the Volvos, the release is inside. Okay. It's under the dash there. On uh, the other trucks, they have outside hood, re hood latches. Right. So some of the things I'm looking for under this hood, uh, air compressor, you know, making sure it's not leaking. There's no, I'm not hearing anything. Uh, I'm not seeing any loose bolts or anything. Um, check my power steering fluid, uh, making sure that it's up to the right level. There's no right. leaks around there. Uh, checking my engine oil. I always check, make sure there's no metal shavings, any uh, water in there. Um, Is that just like a car? You just pull that yep. dipstick out? Yeah, and... it just it twists and it pulls out. Okay. And uh, you can check that. Do you kind of just carry a rag with you? To... I do. I carry. I use paper towels. I don't like greasy rags under my hood, so I, <laughs> I use paper towels and, and discard them. Uh, checking my belts with my alternator, um, checking like my steering link linkage, make sure that it's not loose, it's not bent. Mm -hmm. Checking my frame, uh, make sure sometimes sometimes you get on some rough roads and sometimes they'll tweak your frame. Um, hose clamps, you know, checking everything, make sure there's no leaks, nothing loose. Uh, my wires aren't disconnected, or at least we're not supposed to be. No frays. Um, make sure my gearbox is good. I'm checking my, again, my, my brakes, my shocks, leaf springs. Sometimes, again, you get on rough roads, these, uh, it'll break your leaf springs and uh, they'll scissor on you. Um, pretty much, like I said, I go through everything. I, I check every hose. I usually run my fingers over it. That's, yeah. That'll tell you for sure if it's leaking. Um, and then all your air hoses, I'm, I'm constantly listening to my truck. Your truck's gonna tell you what it's doing. Do you usually have it running when you're doing your pre-trip then? No, 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 I don't have it running, okay. but I make sure my air pressure's built up. Right. How uh, similar are the different models? Like, mm. if you learn the Volvo, but then you borrowed a truck or switch trucks, yeah. so you have to completely learn it all over so again? So the Cummins are, are um, I mean, the basic concept's the same, but the components are in different locations. Okay. So, you know, when you get a new truck, um, I'm, like the DD15s compared to the Cummins, Components are, are considerably different in yeah. the locations. You got to learn your truck. Does it take a while to get your routine down? Of like, okay, I start here and kind of work my way through. Or? Yeah. So I, I always I have my the same way I've been doing it for for years. You know, yeah. I, I start I start at the front. I work my way all the way around. The best thing is consistency. Do it the same way every day, all, all the time. Uh, that way, you, you don't you tend not to forget as much. Yeah. You know, is there a cheat sheet or something like if you were just learning to is, help you make sure you don't there, forget some something? There's cheat sheets out there. Um, our, our school's got a great cheat sheet for the Volvos. Okay. Um, we, we've set it up so everything flows very nicely. Um, it's, it's very hard to forget things when, you're, when you've got that cheat sheet. And, yeah. and it's very hard to miss you know, how the components are laid out. It's, we've set it up very, very simple. I can see it tempting not to do this when it's snowing or... It can be miserable. rainy, muddy. Yeah, I've done I've done this in 15, 20 below zero, and uh, it's miserable, but it's got to be done. You don't you don't skip out on this. Yeah, I picked a good day at least to today's beautiful to see day it. for it.
did have a question on the fifth wheel lock, so I could hear it out here, but yep. are you able to hear that yeah. in the truck? Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah. Um, something I always do also is I always get underneath and check to make sure I can visually see that. So I, I have very specific ways I hook up trailers. Uh, once I hook up, I, I start from the front and work my way back. My uh, landing gear is my safety net. So right. that's, that's the first thing that goes down when I drop. It's the last thing that goes up when I pick up the trailer. Once I hook my trailer up, I'm gonna make sure that the trailer is 100%. You're doing another pre-trip. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna check my brakes, my suspension, um, you know, tires, rims. Same thing I'm doing on the truck, I'm gonna do on the trailer. I'm gonna have to do a light check, make sure all my lights are working properly. Yeah, so Brian, how long have you been with Knight? So I'd, I started with Knight in 2014, I believe it was, or no, 2015. Almost five years I've been with Knight. Okay. Uh, started off here as a driver, uh, drove with him for a little over a year, and I had the opportunity to come into the office and uh, run our DQP program for new hires coming in. Uh, then I went and I was a driver manager for about six months. Then I became a DDM in or in uh, yeah Phoenix Dry, and I was a DDM for there for a few months, and then I went to Ports for almost two, about a year and a half, and uh, I was a DDM there, and now I teach I help teach the CDO program. I do all the classroom instruction, and I, I work out on the range quite a bit with this new uh, new students coming in. We go through everything: how to scale a load, how to drop and hook. Um, you know how to do pre-trips. Um, I, I teach. Uh, I teach them how to how to save money out there. We're all here to make money. Yeah. And a lot of these guys come in not understanding this business. So I, I try to teach them as much about the business side and the financial side as I can, so they understand how to make money in this business and and. Um, you know, they get out there and, and how to manage their time. That's probably one of my biggest uh, things that I teach is how to manage their time out here so they're not wasting time. Uh, you know, I always tell them the way to make money here is managing your time. And with proper time management, the miles will come. Yeah. So we get paid by the mile, but we make money through the time management. Once they pass our program, then they go into, uh, they do a four week training program with a uh, on the road and trainer. Right. Uh, once they're done with that, then they get seated in their own truck and they um, they start their their squire program. What's your favorite part of being an instructor? When they come up to me and shake my hand when they're done. Oh yeah. And um, thank me for everything we taught them. Yeah, I've been in the yard where I see they come in and they honk the horn to show that they passed. Yeah, so yeah, it's, that's gotten to be a big thing. They, um, we, uh, we have them hit the air horn so everybody knows that they passed their test. And, you know, that's where, that's where they're really excited about. When you drove, were you, did you drive for ports too, or? I did not. I, I, uh... I never drove, I've been into the ports, but I never drove actually for the port division. It, it's all in what you're, what, what you're comfortable with hauling. And I, I just got comfortable with dry van and I've, night's been good to me. I, lo I love it here and I love driving. I just needed to be home more often. So I, when I had the opportunity to come into the office, I jumped on it. And so in recruiting, we see a lot of applications, different drivers. And uh, I would probably say the majority of drivers have several jobs in a year. What are your thoughts? Why do you think that is? Well, this, this uh, business is very dynamic and volatile right now. Well, it always has been. And I think a lot of the, these guys think that jumping company to company, they're going to make more money. Mm -hmm. And I actually think they're losing money when they start jumping. Because every company has an orientation of some sort. So they got to sit through that, um, and you're always starting from the bottom. So I, what I try to tell guys is stick with a the company. There's no company out there that's perfect, right? So but stick with a company and try to make it work. You know, Knight, Knight's one of the few companies that I, I've had the pleasure to work for where we really, you know, we try to develop our drivers. Uh, we want our drivers to do their very best. Um, 
you know, and, th and I'm sure there's other companies like that out there. So I always, I always try to encourage them not to bounce companies. It just, you, you never get ahead. And, and when they start bouncing to a lot of companies, a lot of these companies are looking at that going, you know, why are these guys jumping so much? And I think it looks bad on their driving record over time. Yeah. Well, no, that's one thing we look at is you know, how many jobs someone's had in the last year. Right. But I definitely kind of see that trend a lot and was curious what, what causes that. Yeah, I, I think I think the people are apt, when they get angry, they're apt to just quit and there's plenty of driving jobs out there. so. They just go company to company hoping to find that right job. And the problem is, is I don't think that right job usually is out there yeah. for somebody who does that. I think they need to, to if they get angry, talk it talk it over with the, the representatives, whether it's a driver manager or, or a terminal manager, whoever it is, and, and try to come up with a resolution. There was times on the road I was angry, and but I was always able to work it out with my driver manager or, or terminal manager, and and uh, always worked out for the best for me. Yeah, you know, night night always took care of us. When you're a driver development, that's kind of a common term. Right. When you were a DDM, what was kind of the aspects of your job then? Like I said most drivers want to be better drivers. No driver ever wants to be involved in an accident. Right. Uh, no driver wants to you know, cause any harm to anybody or, so, you know, I, I had very good success uh, with both, with most of my drivers, you know, and there's still drivers from when I was a driver development manager, they still come up to me and, and thank me for, you know, helping them out or, or, you know, doing whatever we did to help them. Yeah. And that was, a, that was a big, big part of what we did. Um, and then the other part is just helping them become successful drivers. You know, sh teaching them how to how to um, how to manage their time better. Teach them, you know, how to get bonuses. You know, all all these things are involved in that. So I'm sure you saw it when you like taught orientation and probably in your current position. But what do you think the what do people think of when they think of a driver recruiter? I've, I've heard it a lot with the night recruiters that, you know, they were honest with uh, with the drivers. They they um, they felt like they were taken care of. There's the communication was exceptional, and that's what I, that's probably what I heard. I've been hearing the most, even with the the new students, is th they're generally a lot happier about. Um, dealing with the recruiters that we have compared to others. Um, a lot of the guys, we ask them in class, why did you choose night? Yeah. And a lot of the guys say, because because of the recruiter, the way we were treated, they got back to us quickly. Um, they, you know, there's a, lo there's a lot of reasons, but it comes down to a lot of it is the recruiters. I, when I was recruited in, um, I felt like I was treated extremely fair. Um, I had a great recruiter, I thought. Um, I think she still works here even. But um, yeah, I know that's something we try to do is keep the recruiter involved all the way, you know, from the beginning of hiring, through the hiring process, and still be in the picture and available afterwards. Right. Because you never know when you're gonna have questions or we want the recruiter available and a lot of times that's who you have the relationship with. And we want to continue that relationship for sure. Yeah, I, um, one of the things I do with every driver that comes in tonight is I offer my phone number to them. Yeah. And I tell and I tell them, you know, anytime you need anything, call me. It doesn't matter what time of the day it is. Um, you know, if they have questions, if they need help, I'm always available to them. And. Uh, those two o'clock in the morning phone calls sometimes aren't the greatest, <laughs> but if I can help a driver out, you know, I, I know what it was like when I first started, and I didn't have the the support from, you know, in, really anybody. Yeah. I learned a lot of this on my own, and so I, I've offer I offer my help anytime. Any driver wants to call me, um, I'll give my I give my everybody my phone number when they come into class. And I don't care if it's six months from now, a year from now, if they have a question, they can call me. So Scott, what's, what's your job exactly? What's it entail? Yeah, so as the vice president of recruiting, 
and I, that actually includes more than just our recruiting department. Um, that's probably where I spend majority of my time is with developing our recruiters um, and overseeing the hiring process, but it also includes our CDL school and our tra uh, training program, which we call Squire. Um, so really it's overseeing the onboarding process of any of our drivers, someone coming in, getting their CDL, someone who has their CDL but maybe no experience, or also the hiring of experienced drivers. Too. I really enjoy it because no day is the same. I mean, the needs are always changing and every person that we're working with to get hired on has kind of a different backstory or different scenario to help them get started with the company. So the days go by fast and keeps it interesting for sure. So no, Brian, you're helping develop our curriculum. You know, we switched the school from two weeks to three weeks, getting ready for these changes coming in February. How do you think that's gonna affect just the CDL school in general? Well, with the new curriculum that we're, that we're trying to put together, um, the, the new drivers getting out on the road are gonna have a lot better concept and a lot more knowledge of what they should expect out there. I mean, I've heard of drivers getting their CDL after like 10 hours of a school or 40 hours and right. even just seeing some of this today, how much you have to learn, like even yeah. to pass a pre-trip, I can't imagine that. There's a lot to learn in this industry. Yeah. And you know, we, we even with our fast paced program, um, you know, our, our students, they're on the road half the day and they're on doing skills half the day, every day. And it's, I don't understand how 10 hours you can learn this stuff. Right. So I, I think this this new curriculum that we're coming up with is uh, it's going to be really efficient. Uh, I think the the new students coming in are are really going to enjoy it, um, and I think they're going to be able to learn a lot from it. I think when they get out there, they're going to have a, a better concept of of the the general responsibilities as a driver more so than what. Um, what it used to be or, or what other schools may teach. We want our drivers to be the best. And so we're, we're constantly adjusting um, adjusting our program to, to make it better. And, and we have some great instructors. We have over 100 years experience with the instructors we have. So when we learn something new or we find something new, we look at it and see if it, if, if it makes sense to implement it. Um, so it, it's, like I said, very dynamic. It's constantly changing, um, you know, constantly improving. You know, if, if somebody comes in that shows us something that we didn't think about or, or definitely does, um, does make sense to put into our program, we, we definitely will do it. So, no, Brian, when you were in the office, that you would go out of your way to make sure you had really good relationships with all the drivers you worked with? Absolutely. How was it, like, when you were hired on with Knight to become a driver, how did you build that relationship with, like, your terminal manager and driver manager other operations team? Um, I think a lot of it was just talking to, to um, talking to them as often as I needed. Yeah. Um, so I had, I had some really great dis, uh, driver managers. Um, and it was get personable with them. Don't be afraid to, to open up to them a little bit. Um, ask them how their day's going. You know, mutual respect is everything. Right. If, if they respect you, you respect them. You're going to have a great relationship with them. Uh, and in the end, I mean, even even on your bad days, there's somebody you can call. When I was a driver manager, I made sure I called my drivers every morning and mm -hmm. talked to them, just see how they were doing. You know, I don't. I don't want my drivers driving sick or, or tired. And I and I would ask them, Hey, how you feeling today? How you doing today? You know, and it, it made a big difference in the fact that my drivers knew I cared. One, and um, they they weren't afraid to talk to me about it. <laughs>